OK, so let's say uh, we have three Cartesian equations here, and we want to write them parametrically. Well, when it comes down to it, there are some very easy ways of doing this, OK? Especially with the first two. Anything where you've got y equals just a function of x, what you could do for the first one is just say, well, let x be equal to t. So y would be 2t minus 3. OK, and there we have it. There is the first one written as a pair of parametric equations. Now, you could um, make it a little bit more interesting if you wanted to. You could say, well, if x is equal to, um, well, let's say 2t, then y would be 2 lots of 2t take away 3, so 4t minus 3. Or I could have said x is equal to a half t, in which case I'd get y is equal to 2 lots of a half t minus 3, so t minus 3. And what you'd find is that any of these, OK, um, define exactly the same straight line. Try plotting them uh, on a graph plotter, OK? You should find that there is no difference between any of these. So the same equation um, in, that is in Cartesian form can be written in multiple ways in parametric form. Now, what you've got to think about is that although they give the same Cartesian equation, okay, um, all three of these pairs, it is for different values of t that you get the coordinates. So um, when t is 1, for example, if, if t was representing time, when t is 1 second, I would be at 1 minus 1. But with these, I'd be at 1 half minus 2. And with this, I'd be at 2, 1. OK? So they do each have different properties in the sense of their, in how they're governed by their parameter. However, they would trace out precisely the same straight line. OK, so. That's the first one. Number two, we've got this y equals 2 lots of x minus 3 squared plus 5. And once again, because you've got y as a function of x only, then you could say, well, x is t and y equals 2 lots of t minus 3 squared plus 5. OK? Now, there are other things that you could have done. You could have said that actually the x is equal to uh, t minus 3, for example. So in that case, y would be equal to 2 lots of x, which is t minus 3. So t minus 3, take away 3, so take away 6, squared plus 5. OK? Or we could say that, um, I don't know, uh, x is equal to... Um, t squared, for example. And so y is equal to 2 lots of t squared minus 3 squared plus 5. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful uh, in some of these cases because the way that I've defined it there, although it will trace out the curve, it might not trace all of it out. The problem with this one is that because I've set x to be t squared, potentially, well, well, absolutely in this case, x can now not be, not be negative because t could be negative or positive. But when you square it, x cannot be negative now. And that means that if x can't be negative over here, well, in the case of y, that wouldn't have been negative anyway. But x can now not be negative. And that might now cause a problem. Because if you think about what this curve looks like, OK, so that's 
the curve y equals 2x minus 3 squared plus 5 has a vertex at 3, 5, then this is a curve something like this. There's 3, 5, okay? But it's crossing through the y-axis when we're at uh, 8, 3 squared is 9, 18 plus 5 is so 23. But because uh, x cannot be negative now, this curve does not exist past the y-axis, okay? So your choice of parametric equations can affect the shape of the curve, okay? So you do have to be careful. Now with number three, okay, with number three it might not be as obvious because now we've got x squared plus y squared equals one. And we know that that is a circle centered at the origin with radius 1. If I let x be t, then I would have t squared plus y squared equals 1. So I could say that y squared is 1 minus t squared. And so y would have to be plus or minus 1 minus t squared. Now with parametric equations, we really don't want to get into the realm of having plus or minuses being involved. Okay, so if there is a way of doing it without plus or minus, then that would be a lot better. The reason is that we don't want to have to deal with a function here that is like piecemeal. It's got two pieces to it. Okay, I don't want to have to deal with that. And it makes it all the more complicated because what we have now is a circle that's defined by x equals t and these two bits, okay? So one of these pieces is the bit above the, the x-axis and the minus is the bit below, okay? So we don't particularly want to have to define it that way. So is there another way of defining it? Well, the, also the neat thing with uh, parametric equations is that if you can spot a trig equation that fits in, then you can use that. And we know a trig uh, identity that works with x squared plus y squared equals 1, and that is sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So the fact that we could say sine squared plus cos squared is 1, I could say, well, x is sine theta, y equals cos theta. x squared plus y squared is sine squared plus cos squared. So you could define the circle using those two parametric equations. Much better than those, OK? And it didn't matter which way round I wrote it, because I could have cos squared plus sine squared as 1. So x could be cos theta and y equals sine theta. Both of these are equivalent. So as you can see, right, there is a little bit of this kind of playing around and seeing what is best uh, for working with what we need to do. So. Um, just so long as you remember that there, ca there are, can be multiple ways of representing a Cartesian equation parametrically, and some ways are better than others. Now, our job in the majority is going to be working from parametric and getting to a Cartesian equation, okay? Because the Cartesian equation, there isn't so many ways of writing one of those down when you've got the parametric equations given to you. OK, so that's usually the process that we go through. But it's good to see the other side going from Cartesian to parametric because it's not as straightforward as um, you might always think it is. OK, sometimes there can be little things to consider uh, along the way, um, especially with what we met in number two and certainly with number three with this square rooting.